to us. And because he's near to us, he heals the brokenhearted and he saves us. And I'm just so glad that we have a God that is so real, so near, that even when those who are supposed to be close sometimes leave, that he never leaves us nor forsakes yeah. us. And so yeah. let's give God a hand up of praise. Because it does anything for him because he's still God, but because you recognize that he is God. Isn't that right? Uh, while you're finding your Bible, it's James chapter 5. James, yeah. chapter, James chapter 5. Uh, let, us, let us prepare our hearts for the word. To hear what the Lord has to say. I want to say to those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Uh, to the Northeast Church of Christ. Yes. There is yes. no place yes. like this place. Isn't that right, family? Yes. You got it in one of us, Yeah, we want you to consider this place to be your spiritual family while you are trekking through uh, this world. And God wants, uh, he wants to impact your life. For sure. So we are people that are about letting God use us. So let's see what the Lord has to say from his word. James chapter 5. But well, before we do so, let us pray together. Mighty God, we bow before you. Thank you, Father, for the reminder that you draw close to the brokenhearted. Yeah. And Father, you want to save us. But I also hear the psalmist say that not only do you draw close, Father, but you also heal the brokenhearted. And we thank you for that. Thank you for being a very, very present help in the time of trouble. And Father, for those of us who know that and experience you and your power, I pray we'll let the world know that you are more than able, Father, to help us in our time of need. And I pray that someone who may be here and is weary, Someone here may be brokenhearted or lost or not sure uh, what's happening in their life. Now, Father, they will see this place not just as a one-stop place, but, Father, it will be a place where, Lord, they could reside and call this place home and allow you, Father, to take care of them and to help them. Father, use me this morning, please. To be able to say a word to your people. Yeah. That, Father, someone will respond to your word. Yes. Because your word has gone into their soul and into their spirit. And draw them closer to you and to the cross. I pray I will step out of the way, Father. And allow, allow you to have your way with your people. Right. Be with us now, Father. I pray you. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We have been studying together as a church family the series for this month, Taking Lives. And we're saying what God is challenging us to do is to take back the lives of those individuals that we love. We started in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. And Proverbs 11 30 says that the righteous bears fruit, and their fruit is like a tree of life. And not only that, it says the righteous are wise and the wise people are the ones who save souls. Mm -hmm. Another way of saying that in the Hebrew language is the wise take lives. That's the only place in the Bible where the word in Hebrew is used in a positive way in most cases, it's used in a negative way. And I believe what God is saying to us as a church is that with all the negativity that's taking place around us, we can take the negativity and turn it into a positive thing. And instead of taking lives in a malicious way, uh, hurting people and uh, causing pain, we as a people of God ought to be the light of the world. Isn't that beautiful, church? Yeah. Isn't that what you want to be? Uh -huh. Do y'all want to be darkness? Uh -huh. 
No? Oh, that was a weak answer. Ooh. Right? You all want to be light? Yes. Yeah, so God is saying, be the light. Yes. And the way you do that is to go and invade somebody's uh, uh, life and their circumstance and snatch their life from the grasp of the devil. Yes. That study took us to the book of James. And so we've been looking at, so the first we will look at taking lives by living right. Last week, we learned how to pray right. This morning, we want to learn how to turn right. Everybody say, turn right. Turn right. So what does God have to say to us this morning? We want to turn right. So in James chapter 5, uh, looking at verse 19 and 20. James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Last week, we looked at the fact that we have uh, suffering as Christians. We learned that if you're suffering, pray. If you're sick spiritually, you want to send for the elders, right? Y'all remember that last week? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, then, and then you have also to pray through your, your secrets. And then you also want to look at the satisfaction. Everybody remember that? No, y'all remember that? Y'all yeah. looking at y'all? Okay, all right. Don't you to preach that again? No? All right, that's all right, that's all right. We'll, we'll get it again next year. But today, we want to look at how, how do we turn right? Now, what does that have to, uh, what does that mean? What is God saying to us? In James chapter 5 and verse 19, James wrote these words. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the what? Truth. Truth. And someone turns him back. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the arrow of his way will save a wife soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. We are a church that's in the business of turning people back. Now I'm not saying turning them back from being here, yeah. but turning them back from living wrong, right. Right? right? Now look at what James is saying, brethren, he's talking to the church. There are two things I want you to see this morning. Number one, I want you to see the conversion. And if time permits, I'd like for you to also see the covering. Right. Number one, the what? Right. And number two, right. James says, brethren, if James was here, or if, if I was to use this and apply it to us personally, I would say northeast. See, James is getting, all per he's getting personal. He's saying, brethren, the, the word, the Greek word is adelphos. It means uh, to be born from the same womb. He's talking not to the men. He's talking to the brothers and the wife, sisters. He says, brethren. Those of us who have been born again, those of us who are of the same spiritual family, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm, and I'm using brethren because what I'm about to say to you is, is family business, and we need to have that feel of family. At Northeast, we need to have that feeling of what? Family. Matter of fact, in Bible class this morning, we talked about be, being a friendly church. We want to we want to be a friendly church, but not friendly just with each other. We want to be a family church, but not just in a way where we exclude people from not wanting to be here. Does, does that make sense? Uh, we want we want to be able to be in such a way where when people come here, they say, "Man, that church is on fire for the Lord." That church. Is about their father's business, and that church wants me to be here. And as Northeast, we need to start becoming more friendly. We need to become. Uh, we need to let people feel the presence of God and feel the love of God. That they want to say, "I want to be at Northeast." Can we do that? I believe we can, and I believe we will. So he says, "Brethren," but look at this. He says. If anyone among you does what? Wonders from the what? The truth. If you look around you right now, here's the reality. That there are people that we know and love who every now and again don't show up for service. 
every Sunday. They've been missing for months. And I believe what God is saying to us as a church, that while we are making our way to heaven, there are times we will get weary, and there are times there are those around us who will get weary, and we can't afford to leave anybody behind. No Christian, no disciple left behind. Can we do that? Yes. So what he's saying is, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, I want to suggest to you that not only do we need to be evangelistic outside, we need to be evangelistic in the house. Yes. That there's some brethren, and we're going to see in the text, that even though you've been washed in the blood, even though we are washed in the blood uh, and covered by the love of Christ, it does not exclude us from the possibility of being in the house, but being lost. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. But then there are those who are brethren who are not here, and we need to go get them. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm almost finished. I heard that. <laughs> if anyone among you wonders from the what? Truth. Yes, now the question is, how or why would somebody wonder? Do y'all want to see? Yeah. And you, because we need to know, because if we don't know, I, I may be the preach, I may be up here preaching and I may be wondering mm. also. Yeah. I need to know the signs that will help me that I don't wonder from the truth. Yeah. Or I need to know so I can help a brother or a sister from wondering from the truth. So let's go back to the beginning. When James, James is ending the letter, he's now encouraging. He's saying, don't wonder, but he already told them why they wonder. Look at chapter 1. People wonder. As Christians, we wonder. James chapter 1 and verse 3. We'll wonder because we have no staying power. Y'all heard me? I, I leave because I have no staying power. So in James chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, knowing that the testing of your what? Faith produces what? Patience. Y'all see that? The testing of my faith produces patience. You want God to test you. How many of you like to do tests? Or, or do, no? See, I'm crazy. I love school. I, I think I could be in school the rest of my life. I love school, I love to study, and I love taking tests because for me it's a challenge. I can show the teacher how well I know the material. That's just me. Does that make sense? I, I rise to the challenge. Right? I'm a bookworm. Right? I think we ought to be the same way as Christians. We ought to become, y'all ought to take on my spirit. So, so catch it. Yeah, when it comes to your Christianity, we ought, we ought to become, if you will, like bookworm, because we want, to, we want to go through the test. Why? Because the testing produces in me the strength that I need to stay put. But we wonder because we don't want to be tested. We just want to have a convenient kind of religion. A convenient Christianity. I've been washed in the blood. I'm okay. And I'm okay with just coming to church on Sunday and on Wednesday. But God is saying, no, my child. I want to stretch you. I want to give you more. I, I see power and possibilities in you because I made you. So let me stretch you. And you're like, no, I want to stay like a little baby and stay in the cradle. And then you rock me to sleep, Lord. Just just and God is saying, no, you got to stretch and grow up. And you're like, no. Right. 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 But because we won't stretch and grow, we have no staying what? Power. That's number one. Number two, we struggle with our faith. In chapter 2, I'm looking at verse 14 quickly. James 2. I'm, just, I'm trying to show you what's happening behind the scenes that causes us to, to wander. Right? Because somebody here needs to come back. So this sermon is really a more of an evangelistic sermon. It's a, this sermon is a sermon of repentance. Right? So I, I don't know why you came looking for this morning. But I'm going to preach through this anyway. And, and then the Lord expects all of us to respond in the manner that, that, that's necessary to walk this sermon. James 2 and verse 14. What does it say? James 2 and verse uh, 14. Why does it profit, my brethren? Yeah. 
If someone says he has what? Faith. Faith. But what? Does not have works. Well, hold on. What I said to me is, what God is saying, the word faith is, is, not, is not just enough just to say, I believe. How many of you in here believe that God is real? How many of you believe that God can change your life and, and, and do wonderful things in your life? How many of you believe that? Well, no, the challenge is, show it. Where's the evidence? See, it's not just enough to say, I believe. See, God, the word faith in and of itself in the Greek, it means I believe, therefore I will do. It's like saying, bro, I love you. I mean, because I love you, I will give you, I will sacrifice whatever it is. I will give you, I will show you that I love you. Does that make sense? So faith in the Greek, in the net, what God expects, what God, what God expects, not what Brother Case or even the leadership here, what heaven expects of all of us, including myself, is that if I believe, yeah. therefore I will do. Yeah. We, can't, we cannot be satisfied with just saying, I'm a member of Northeast. Yeah. I can't just be satisfied by saying, I am a believing member. Rather, we got to get to the point where we say, I am a faithful disciple. Because a faithful disciple is someone that has faith yeah. and faithfully do what they believe in. Right. Lord, I believe you're real. And so as a result, because you're blessing my life, you've been so good to me, I want to get involved in ministry. I want somebody else to get all this goodness that I have and this anointing on me. I want to rub on somebody. Not quite. So you believe, then do what? Show. But well, watch this though, don't forget chapter one. Because if I don't let my faith be tested, if my faith is weak, then how in heaven's name can I do anything anyway? Woo! Okay, just leave me alone. Yeah, we can't be okay with saying, I come and sit on my hands. Well, nobody has asked you to do anything. Really? You volunteer? You said, Lord, here I am. I want to be your child. And because you said that, you signed up for it. So get busy. And if you don't see a ministry that, that, that needs to happen to, to help people, come talk to the leaders. Listen, this is on my heart. I think there's a theme. Well, let's just talk about it. Let's do ministry. But show your Faith. Don't have your head hung low at work. If you believe in God, hold your head up high. Things not going well, God is still on his throne. Yes. Live like it. Yes. When you come here, how are you doing? Well, I'm not doing too well, but I am here because God has given me another day, yes. another chance yes. to glorify him. Yes. I'm not feeling well. I'm just being honest for the day, but I am here and I'm giving God praise. I'm giving God glory because he has been good to me. Yes. And I can't afford to be quiet about it. Yes. I'm going to shout it from the mountaintop. Yes. I'm sorry, I got a little bit excited, all right? But watch chapter 3. Not only, not only uh, do we lack staying power, we struggle with our faith, yeah. but look at chapter 3 uh, where it said, we see we have an a issue between my wisdom and God's wisdom. Is that first part? Verse 17 or verse 19? Where is that, that last part for the muse? 17. 17. What did verse 17 say? There you go. But the wisdom that is from what? Above is from is what? First what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of what? Mercy and what? Good fruits without what? Partiality and without what? Hypocrisy. We don't like that. Because when we see that, God is saying, hey, get rid of the ugly stuff. You're like, Lord, I love ugly sometimes. <laughs> Lord said, no, you got to get rid of the muck. Because if you, if you keep holding on to the muck, I can't work with you. Yeah. It says, but the wisdom that is from what? Above is first what? Pure. So I want to see God's wisdom. I'm recapping. I know we went through this last time, but we got to see this. I don't want to wander. Not wander as in wondering if. But I don't want to wander away from the truth. And we wander away from the truth, again, I'm summarizing, 
when we have no staying power, when we don't exercise our faith, when we don't seek godly wisdom, and what that looks like is, Muse, how you doing, man? Man, I'm all right. I come, I'm trying to minister to Muse, and Muse's response is, man, I don't want to hear no sermon. I don't want to hear no word right now. I know what the Bible said. Well, I want to say, if you know what the Bible says, then do it. That's all I want to do sometimes. I, don't, I can't do that to you. Right? But I love you. I want to, I want to say, man, if you know what the Bible says, but we gotta seek godly wisdom. <laughs> Y'all see this work? Well, look at verse, look at chapter four. Start from verse one. I'm just walking through. Look at what it says. So we're looking at what causes somebody to wander from the truth. It says, where do, where do wars and what? Fights come from among you. Do they not come from your what? You see that? I want to fight. We pick fights. I already know what I'm going to say when I get to the meeting or when I get home and I see, I see her or I see him. I know when I get to the office what I'm going to say. We pick fight because we know what we want and we can't get it. I'm going to fight with you, right? Where did I come from? It says from our own desires for pleasure that war in our wife. Members. It's all about what I want. But watch this. It says you lust and do not what? So we're craving for something, and we don't get what we want. You murder, you commit, you cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not what? Ask. Why? Because now you're seeking your own agenda. So I'm, I've left God's wisdom, and I'm seeking my wisdom. So when I, I want to do me. And that's how we start to wonder because now it's not, it's not no more, it's no longer about what God wants, it's what case wants. Does this make sense? Yes. And we become, we become critical. The story is told of a well-known evangelist in the person of D.L. Moody. The story is, it's a real story. It says that after Moody finished preaching at uh, the gospel meeting, a young critic, a young man came up to him and said, Dr. Moody, uh, I listened to your sermon and you had 18 uh, 18 things that, were, that was wrong with your English. <laughs> Dr. Moody says, young man, son, I'm only preaching the gospel with the little grammar that I know. Dr. Moody then says to him, son, what are you doing with your grammar? See, many of us we spend time critiquing people. Yeah. And we have lists and we have things to say and we, we're busy looking at what other people are doing. But the, the question is, what are you doing for the world? Yeah. The time it takes me to spend time observing my life. Yeah. How many lives have you let pass by you? Yeah. I'm, already, I'm already covered in the blood. God is still working on me. Yeah. And I, I, he, he's not finished yet. Case, case, case is not case yet. I, 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 I don't. I, I can just see what God is gonna do with me, just me. But, but then I gotta let Him use me to bless somebody else's life. I ain't got no time to be looking at Corey's life and what Corey is doing. Now I help my brother, but if I spend time critiquing everything he says and everything he does, we will never get nowhere because we have. Christmas to say, Matthew's to say, and Kramer to say. I need Kramer to be a brother. I need Matthew to be a brother. I need Christmas to be a brother. I ain't got time to fight with my brother. Stop fighting. Stop focusing on the negative. When we take the time to focus on the negative, God cannot help you. Life does not thrive in stagnation. And you can't afford to keep holding on to the darkness and the mess and pointing fingers. Rather, if there's going to be life and growth in your life, yeah. you have to let go of what you want. Let it go. Yeah. If you don't let it go, God cannot bless you. Right. He won't bless you? Yeah, you're going to miss the blessing. You all, you all, you all, you, do you all want your blessing? Yeah, yeah I want 
want to be blessed by God. I'm not just talking about flipping blessing up. I'm, I'm being for real. I want God to use me. But if I don't let go of what? Doing case one, I will never be used. Anyway, I'm beating that too much. So he says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask what? I'm, come on, y'all see? You ask, oh, I'm sorry. But open your Bibles, church. Come on. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. You got you to gotta get this. You got to see. Look at it in your Bible. So put your phone. Put your Bible on your phone. Let's study together. I don't know what's happening. Okay, so it said you ask and you do not what? Receive because you ask what? A miss. It means that you are so consumed with what you want that even when you talk to daddy, you are asking out of the context of what you want. Yeah. So it's not even, so even when we say this, watch this. Even if I say, Lord, let your will be done, that's a lie. Because I'm still in, I'm consumed with me. I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture. It's all about me. So even my, 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 my prayers are, Lord, help me. Lord, give me this. And we don't pray for each other. So even when we pray, the prayer won't go up. Because you're praying to yourself. Uh, anyway. So he says that you may spend it on your wife. Pleasure. Look at verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the wife? World is what? Enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be wife, a friend of the world, makes himself a wife. Enemy with God. So in other words, you can't, you can't say that God is your everything, but Everything you do is against your everything. Yeah. We, in other words, we can't live double lives. Right. I didn't, <laughs> it's a fight. Is it making sense? Yeah. Right. So that's why we can have Christians in the house and still be wandering and living as if we don't know any truth. Mm. Come on. And that's why some of us, because then we have a brother sitting in the house and he, he hasn't checked himself. God, he hasn't let the truth get into his life and it, he goes unchecked. That's why eventually the brother that used to sit on the front pew eventually moves to the middle, eventually moves to the back, eventually moves to the foyer, eventually moves to the parking lot. God ain't filming this morning. And next thing you know, come on, you where you at. I've had bedside baptists. Why? Because what's in him was not checked by the truth. That's right. And that's why every member in here need to see your place in the process of evangelism. That's right. But I'm to tell you what happens every Monday. Every Monday, I'm making it my habit. I text all the purpose group leaders. Monday is called Find the Sheep Monday. Come on, group leaders, help me. And wives, help me. Uh, Y'all doing it? Oh, oh, praise the Lord. All right? I text them. It's called Find the Sheep Monday. Because, because if these leaders don't see that it's not just about coming here and sitting and worshiping, you got to also look for the sheep. So the sheep in here spend Monday or the whole week, I just choose Monday, to go find the sheep. Well, look how powerful it is. I'm doing it, so I don't want to tell them to do it, and I'm not, I'm not doing it, so guess what happened this week? Some of you were touched by the loss of a friend, right? Clarence McDonald, who really is a brother in Christ that grew up here. Well, Sister Brenda Lawrence, uh, she is in my group. I haven't seen her for a while, so I said, let me call Sister Brenda Lawrence. Call Sister Brenda. When I said the phone, Sister Brenda is distraught, and she is crying. Sister Brenda, what's the matter? Well... This, this young man who I consider to be my son, who is a, the boyfriend of my daughter, he just died. Right? And you all, some of you know, because he grew up here, you're aware of the story, he just died. But watch this. If I didn't go find the sheep, I wouldn't have known. Now, Sister Carrie, Jisha and I were sitting together. She told me about the young man, but it just, you know, she's saying this is a friend that she know. It didn't connect. But it all, it got powerful for me when I went and found the sheep. Yeah. Because now the sheep is broken hearted. Right. Now the sheep is destroyed. Yes. And as a group leader, I'm now in action. Yeah, let me minister to the sheep. 
So I contacted the sisters in my group. Sister so-and-so and sister so-and-so. Sister Brenda is doing something. We need some food over there immediately. Yeah. The sisters responded. But what's even more powerful, be careful now, you're finding the sheep. Sister Matthews woke me up early Monday morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was turning over. It was my third turnover. The phone rang. Sister Matthews was on her game. She connected with the aunt of the young man who lost his life. Long story short, without me boring you, Wednesday night, the family, Sister Brenda and her family, decided to have a prayer vigil at where the young man died. I was so proud to be able to represent you as a church and represent God and be the minister that they asked to come and pray at the prayer vigil. Yeah. Woo! It put the church on display. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And guess what? Those same people who were at the vigil are coming to the homegoing service this Saturday. Yeah. Brother Kiss, what's the point? It started with finding the sheep. Yeah. Now, was it difficult? Yes, it is difficult that Clarence passed. But God used his life to draw people to yeah. him. And so now as a church, we got to be ready to receive them. Yeah. Oh, y'all missed that. But you got to now see that the seat beside you is empty. You got to you gotta feel the cushion. You got to say, I, I, I need some warmth beside me. I need to go find the sheep because the Lord is trying to, see, he's trying to use me this week. And I can't afford to let it be about my feelings. And what I want, I need to go find somebody that is broken, busted, and disgusted. Somebody that's turned upside down that needs to be turned right side up. Somebody that needs the love of Jesus needs to be found. I'm sorry, I've been talking about that. We got to see it. We got to be a church. And if all of us get involved in the process and get over yourself, God will use you. Anyway, I'm trying to give you a picture. So watch. So now go back to James 5. As I, as I listen to a close. James 5, verses 19 through 20. Y'all all right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so look at those. So he says, brethren, <laughs> if anyone who lacks, who's among, anyone among you who wanders from the what? Truth. Truth. Yeah. And someone turns him back. Yes. Right. Yes. You got to see the picture now. Yeah. You got to see. Someone does what? Turn him back. Bro, help me real quick. I need you, I need you studying. Now watch this. See, I want you to see this picture that I take my seat. David is lost. I haven't seen him in a while. Reconnect with him. Minister to him. Watch this now. Not by what I think or feel. That's right. Not about what I think or feel or about Northeast either. But rather what I know about God. Yes. And I take that word, and I take that word, and God uses me to bless him with the word. Yes. To anoint him with the word. Y'all see this? Not by your philosophy. You got some issues dealing with, you open that word, and you, you read that word to him. Yes. You pray scripture over him. Yes. You got to see the picture. Remember last week we said pray for yourself, send for the elders, uh, and then confess your sin. But this week, the whole church is involved in this. That's right. And this, Northeast, you got to see this, this is a commandment. Yeah. This is not a suggestion. Yeah. It's a commandment of us to go find the sheep. So when I go find my brother, Sister Jackson, and I open the word and I minister to him with the word, it's going to prick his heart. And when yeah. it prick his heart, it's going to cause him to repent. Now, what is repentance? Repentance is when I change my mind. Y'all yeah. see this? Yeah. Yeah. Repentance is I was going this way. Y'all follow me? Yeah. Watch this now. I was going this way, but now I have repented. I have changed my mind, yeah. and now I'm going what? Another way. Well, watch this now. Uh, six months later, the devil uh, started to pull me back. Yeah. The devil started to whisper in my ear. Yeah. The devil say, oh, David. Yeah. Let me show you this temptation. Yeah. Look at her, David. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said something. <laughs> Look at her, David. You're single and handsome. You're a preacher, she can't resist. Right? So David, look. And so he looks. Looks a little bit longer. He gets distracted. And before you know it, no, 
watch this. The brother repented. Yeah. But he gets distracted. And because he's distracted, now he has no staying power. Yeah. His faith is weak. Yeah. He has no godly wisdom in him anymore. Yeah. He's going off of what David wants and thinks. Yeah. Y'all see where I'm going? Yeah. That when he talks to God, it's all about what he wants. The brother ends up turning where he came from and starts to go back. But Brother Case, what's the point? What God wants yeah. is not just repentance over here. Yeah. He wants you to change your mind. Yes, sir. But he wants you to not only repent, yeah. but to be converted. Yes. Brother Case, what's the point? Not only should the word cause me to turn, but the word should also become a part of my life. Yes, I ought to hold the word close to my heart. Yes. This dictates my life. Yes. So when the devil comes to you and says, what's up, man? You right? Are. Yeah! Yes. The word. When the sister comes and she texts you and she says, hey, Brother Sean, what are you doing? Yeah! Praise the Lord. Point. We have a bunch of us, including myself, so I'm not exempt from this, who every time we repent, and we mean good, but we're not converted. And because we're not converted, we are susceptible to becoming sheep wandering without a shepherd. We come and we pray to God, we say, Lord, yes, I love you, but our heart is not truly given to him. Somebody challenged me this week and I will never forget it because it's true. I was told that I'm a smart man and I'm good at taking concepts and applying concepts, but those concepts I have not committed to my heart. And oh, it brought tears to my eyes. It pricked my heart, because that's right. I'm good at studying and I'm good at preaching the word. I'm good at telling you what to do and I'm good at telling myself what to do, but I won't commit it to my heart. That's why sometimes when the devil comes, instead of me taking the word and do what Brother Sharp just did and saying, Lord, give me a word for this moment, yeah. for this valley moment. Yeah. Lord, it's dark and I can't see the light and you can find the word. No, he said, what I do is I rely on case. Stop relying on yourself. Right. Right. Let the power of God yes. get in your life yes. and change you. But preacher, how do I do that? Chapter 4, quickly. Go back to chapter 4, James 4. Yeah. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Look at verse, who's, I'm sorry. Sorry. Look at verse 7, quickly, James 4. <coughs> James, not John, James, John, James. Read for me. Therefore, submit to God. Therefore, what? Submit to God. Therefore, what? Submit to God. Therefore, what? Submit to God. Everybody, therefore, what? Submit to God. So, what's the application? What's the point of this sermon? I told you, sermon is a, a sermon of repentance. What God is saying to this church is, therefore, what? Submit to God. What does that look like? In the Greek, it means like a good soldier. I used to be in the. In the uh, the cadet back home, it's ROTC here in America. And the whole idea is when, the, when that sergeant major said, Patoo! I tell you, <laughs> By the front, quick march, left, right, and you go. It means that when I hear the voice of my commanding officer, and he says, Patoo! You respond to God because when he gets, he ought to have your undivided attention. Yes. If you're going to make it in this world, it's not by what you think or what you do. It's by what? Because what God, God knows best. And I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it because then you ask, Lord, what are you trying to do? But just get in line. The word submit simply means to get in line. So when you get in line, you may wait a little while, but when you get what you need to get, you'll get your blessing. 
So number one, submit to who? God. If this church is going to be the church it ought to be, every member in here ought to do what? Submit to God. If you want your life to be better, to get over your brokenness, your addiction, broken marriages, to get over yourself, to stop doing the things you're doing, what God is saying to you is, we need to do what? Submit to God. Submit to God and what? Resist the who? The devil. And he will what? You guys have a picture. The devil has no power over you. Woo, when Jesus went to Calvary and his blood flowed on Calvary. And when he died and got up from the grave, what he did was he took away the power of hell over your life. God got a sin. He took away the power. So anytime the devil, when you do the things you do, really what the devil is working on, he's working on permission time. Yeah. Brother Case, what are you talking about? It simply means the only way I can mess is I'm the devil. The only way I can mess with Corey and be buddy buddy with Corey and direct Corey's life is when Corey gives me permission. That's right. I have no power. Y'all missed it. The devil, come on, the devil has no power. Only what you give him. And when you let the devil in, he's going to mess with your mind. Mess with your feelings. Make you focus on the negative thoughts. But when you resist him, he will flee from you. The word flee doesn't mean he'll walk away. No, but when you let the power of God reside in your life, the devil will run. Yeah. Let the devil run from you. How do you do that? Submit to the Lord. Thank you. Bless you. Submit to God. I'm done. He said, Brother Keith, he said two points. Yeah. The second one is covering. Y'all want to know what a covering is? Y'all want to know? Yes. Come next week. <laughs> come, for, come next week, and I'll show you the covering. You'll see how to love right. But just right now, I want to see you, see, I want you to see how to turn right. Yeah. There's somebody here this morning. You've been repenting. That's good. You've been repenting. You've been repenting. You say, preacher, I've been repenting, but, you know, I keep going back. Well, right, right now, the challenge is be converted. Yes. Be converted. The word conversion simply means to give your mind, to focus your life, your entire being on that very thing that will direct your life. Yes. Yes. You all know what you do. Yeah. Because you do. People, we all do what we want to do when we want to do it, don't you? Yeah. And when you make up your mind to do something, whatever it is, you give your undivided attention, your heart into it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. From the youngest to the oldest, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And if you understand what I'm talking about, whatever that thing is that you like to do, whatever that thing is that you like to do, God is saying, give me all that energy and more. Yeah. Because that thing cannot do for you what I can do. Yeah. That person cannot do for you what I can do for you. And if you get that, that's what conversion is. To not only repent and turn around and get on the right path, but to let the word of God direct your life. It's not easy. It's not easy. But God will not call you to something that you cannot do. Right now, it starts with you saying, Lord, I submit. Yes. Yes. I'm tired of being under the devil's control. Yes. I submit to you this moment, yes. and I want to start that journey with you. Don't wait for the song. <coughs> song yes. to sing. Don't wait for that. This is scary. Yes. Because you got to get to the point where you realize that this is a life or death kind of situation. Yes. And if you don't give your life to him, you're simply saying, devil, here, take my life. Is that what you want? Is that what you all want? Is there anybody here that wants us to give their life to the devil? Anybody? I don't think so. So don't leave here. Don't leave here under his control. Whatever it is you came in here with, 
he could leave it at his feet by learning to submit. Stop wondering. And I want to challenge this church to feel, if you can feel cushion space beside you, like another body supposed to be there, that means you need to be calling somebody today and calling somebody tomorrow. You need, that's all right, yeah. Come on, so if somebody needs to respond, don't wait till we start singing, don't be afraid. Raise your hand and I'll come get you. Yeah. I'll walk with you. Is there somebody right now that needs to respond to Jesus? Don't, don't wait for the song. Matter of fact, we don't need a song. You just need to respond. Yeah. Is there someone? Is there someone? God is calling you and he's saying, stop wondering. Stop leaving the truth. Stop relying on yourself. Lean on me. Let me Let me love you. Let me help you. If that's what you want this morning, respond as we stand and as we sing. Restore my spirit, Lord.